Hello, dear beloveds. I have uh, some words today that I've written, which is a bit unusual for me. I'm also just post exercise, but the energy is here and I want to share. I have over the last probably 18 months seen the call from spiritual people for, you know, where are the leaders in this time of uncertainty and chaos caused by the COVID-19 pandemic? And particularly since the announcement of um, requirements for vaccination, if you are wanting to participate fully in the world, certainly here in Australia, and I know uh, in other places globally. And there's been this uh, sort of call for, you know, spiritual leaders to step forward and to, I guess, condemn or um, offer some kind of um, perspective on this. And I have done that in various ways, but not as transparently as I'm going to do today. Something very much that I have sat with is knowing that I have a certain position of authority and that my opinion will carry weight. And I certainly have not wanted to influence anybody uh, in their own decision making processes as they've gone on this journey which is fuel to our uh, awakening as everything in life is. And what I notice is a tendency uh, amongst uh, people who identify as spiritual, uh, not all, but some to imply that to uh, be vaccinated um, is uh, not a sovereign choice. It's a choice of cowardice even, and that it's a choice that is kind of, you know, being obliging and uh, accepting uh, the tyranny of the government. And I feel quite uncomfortable with that idea. I feel quite uncomfortable with the idea of becoming more woke in the dream um, and investing in the dream in any way because my work is non-dualism. So I've written something today that I am going to share with you and it is what I have to say on the matter. My understanding of how to be a leader at this time has been to allow others to use this as fuel to their own awakening rather than to tell people what it means because my assessment of good or bad, right or wrong is coming simply from my own limited human perspective, no matter how much time I spend in meditation. And I simply cannot see as God sees and therefore I am not judge and jury. Many spiritual people uh, in the world seem to be taking a very righteous path of suggesting that they are judge and jury. They know what's right because they've done the research and that there is somehow um, a, a righteousness that they're entitled to to condemn those who are not speaking out against uh, these uh, actions that governments are taking. So I want to make it very clear that I am not on either side of this and in fact cannot see that there are two sides of this. I only see that there is a global consciousness experiment that's been given the opportunity to awaken to itself right now. And as a spiritual leader, that is the level that I can serve at. And I am not interested in buying into any of the conversations about who, what, where, why, and when. And that is the position I've maintained throughout this. <clears throat> Nothing has changed in the way I serve because my service is not responding to the machinations of the dream. My service is to train women specifically at this time as priestesses of non-local consciousness to awaken from the dream so that we may dream reality better on behalf of all. And that work is my holy task with this life and does not change even when the world is seemingly more challenging or difficult than it was a year ago or two years ago. We are also in a very privileged position, particularly in Australia, but anywhere in the Western world where we may see the events of the last 18 months as rare and uncommon and particularly outrageous. And yet if we had any sense of history or even contemporary life for the majority of the planet, we would understand how indulged and privileged we are that we have not had to give up anything, either for our spiritual seeking or our lives in general. So I'm going to read what I've written because I think I can articulate perhaps better. And I am not sharing this with the hope that you will approve or like, but rather that it is what is true for me at this point. And if presented with new information, I will, of course, evolve my understanding. But at this time, let me share. Where are the leaders for this new time? 
We don't get to choose how we awaken. We wish we did. We buy into all the spiritual BS ideas that lead us to believe that we can manifest our awakening on our terms. Ajashanti calls that the spiritualized ego. The ego's needs have nothing to do with the purpose of this life. This precious life is laden with purpose. The purpose is the same for all and it is to awaken to the truth of what we are. We are asleep. Our holy task is to wake up. But not to wake up to more layers of the dream. To awaken to the truth that we are God. Unlimited, infinite consciousness. Being awake has nothing to do with getting more invested in this consciousness experiment called life. It is awakening to the reality that this life is a dream. We are the dreamers. Collectively and individually, we must dream better and ultimately awaken in the dream. That is the experiment. This is how we set ourselves and all consciousness free. You see the spoon. You are angry at the spoon. You are in love with the spoon. You're making meaning of the spoon that has nothing to do with the spoon because the spoon doesn't exist. The infinite intelligence of this consciousness experiment will arrange everything for the most rapid and efficient awakening. Our only task is to use whatever conditions are placed in front of us to awaken rather than to resist and rage and rail against them. Our freedom of choice, our power to manifest is in how we respond, manifest your emotional response. That's it. The infinite uses whatever conditions are provided. So let's provide better conditions. This is how we ease the suffering of our world. So choose your response, knowing it is more powerful or the most powerful action you can take. It gives the infinite intelligence something better to work with. The infinite intelligence can only work with the conditions that we provided. So your decision is irrelevant. You cannot make a wrong choice when you make a choice from love, not human love of being approved of, of liked, of whatever your conditions are for love, but divine love. Stop being so shocked by the state of the world. We've been spiritualizing the ego for so, so long and calling it awakening, and the reckoning time has come. It is time for us to get over the indulgent, immature idea that our spiritual path should make us comfortable. The spiritual path is the most radical of them all. It is revolutionary. It is the only revolution. It is the power that creates reality. And the perceived sickness we see in the collective right now is a reflection of how we have used our spirituality like despotic tyrants tending to the wants of our ego. The word sovereign is used a lot in the world right now, usually to indicate that the right choice has been made according to our sense of right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. Sovereign means to possess ultimate power, and we do as the dreamers of the dream. But we aren't being sovereign. We're being reactionary. We are imagining it is all shocking, out of our hands, happening through no fault of our own. But we have created this reality together. We have done so largely by playing God instead of being God, deciding what is right or wrong. We have empowered our egos, not our souls, and now shit is getting real and we are uncomfortable and we are outraged. It is time for collective spiritual maturing. The world is a reflection of our relationship with God, which is to say our relationship with ourselves. Immature, egoic, seeking comfort and calling for revolution while sitting on our thrones eating cake. Nothing has gone wrong, for nothing can actually happen. It is a nightmare that reflects our soul sickness, and it is necessary that we awaken. That is our power to change the dream, to recognise it is an illusion and stop being so invested to recognise it is a necessary illusion, for it is the path to our awakening. It is everything, and it is nothing. Whilst we perceive duality, right and wrong, good and bad, we are creating more of the nightmare we are seeking to end. So it is time. It has landed on our doorstep. Good. Life has been this kind of nightmare for billions of others for centuries, and where was your outrage then? 
Separation dualism has allowed us to protect ourselves from the discomfort and horror of what we have created with our spiritualized ego, and now that time is rapidly ending. We are all implicated, and we are all sovereign. We must heal the sickness, not add more fuel to the fire. Use what is right in front of you to fuel your awakening to truth, not to create more division. Don't be seduced. Let chaos and discomfort be your companion. Don't reject it. Welcome the changing energy. Take whatever actions you want to take, but take them from the space of love. It is necessary this time to shake us all from the slumber we have been indulging. Nothing has gone wrong. Take the action that you are called to take, but take it with love. Wake up. Use this. It is the cause of our healing. The only truth is that we are all walking each other home, as Ramdas tells us, and we cannot free ourselves alone. There is only one of us here. We made this. We can heal the dream of separation, but not through tribal warfare. The choice, the action, the event in the dream is irrelevant. What will you do with your pain?